These two brass discs are check valves. I'll show you how to remove them without damaging. This first one is bad. If I put a tube on it, I should be able to breathe in the tube, but not breathe out. I know the valve is bad because I can breathe in and out of this valve. Grind down the head of a nail so it fits the valve perfect. You can see the diameter is the exact same as the valve now. Clean the end with a wire wheel. Clean everything with rubbing alcohol. Mix up some epoxy glue. Add some glue to the end of the nail. Set it onto the valve. Allow the glue to set. The check valve that we're removing now works. So I'll pull up the first part of the brass, which is right there. Directly under this brass, we have a little rubber flap. We'll push the flap to the side and you can immediately see that spring underneath. Here's a closer look at that spring. We'll take a close look at this rubber piece. It's just a disc, like a rubber disc here. Here are all the pieces. We've got the brass piece that was at the top. We've got the flap and we've got the spring. And this is where it went. We'll hold on to these because sometimes this is all it takes to get an engine running. I'll show you how the passages work on this. If you take a look at this pin, you can see it goes all the way through so air can come into the hole and out this way. On this second valve, the air can go in this way and come up this way. One of the check valves on this one is bad, so I've been soaking it for about a week. We'll clean this one up and see if it works now. We'll test the first valve by putting a piece of tubing on it. To test the valve, if you put suction onto this, you should get all the suction, but if you blow on it, there should be no air going through the valve. So it gives you suction. But when you blow, you can see it comes out the valve. So this valve, even though it's soaked for over a week, is still not cleared up. We'll test this valve from the other side. We'll put the tube really tight on this hole and see if there's one direction. Air goes in both directions. Both of these valves are bad. Another way to remove this is if you take a stick pin that's very strong, put it into the center, but don't go all the way through to the rubber, and just take it and pull it up like this. And you can see, here we've got it. On this, you can see all the way to the other side. You can see how the flap is almost curled up and is on the inside of the spring. Right here is the flap. Maybe we can flatten that back out and see if we can get it to work again. You can see that real tiny spring Using there. the same method, we'll pull out this other valve. We've got it right there. You can see the valve flap is exactly where it's supposed to be, and this valve kind of works, but it leaks. We'll pull the flap to the side, and you can see the spring in there. Very small spring. We'll clean out all the passages. We'll recondition the rubber flaps. We'll soak these in some 303. Sometimes this can make the rubber more flexible. We'll spray in enough so they soak it we in. Clean the housing and rubbing. The rubber discs have been soaking over. We'll set the small springs in. Make sure the springs are centered in the middle. Put the disc right on top of the spring. This disc does have a bit of a curve to it. We'll slide the metal discs back into place. Press them in evenly. Slide in the second one. Press it firmly into place. We'll test the valves now. Now the first valve is working. If I suck air in, no problem. If I blow air, it stops it. We'll test the second valve. We'll turn it over, put the tube on. I can suck air through it, but I can't blow air through, that's good. So by pulling everything apart and using this 303, Work. Now I'm sure there's all kinds of other things you can use other than this 303. I've heard some people use brake fluid, a lot of different things. With everything assembled, the check valves are working. That's how the check valves work.